Hey, what's going on guys? Hope you're all doing well and we are finally doing it. We're putting the 12 core 3900X on a cheap B350 motherboard, overclocking it and seeing what happens next. As we have come to learn, X570 motherboards are very expensive, just relatively a lot more expensive than X470 motherboards where you can expect to pay about $100 premium or more for the X570 uh, counterparts. So really, what is the viability of using a 12 core 3900X on a cheap motherboard? The board say something you can get for a hundred dollars or 150 dollars is there actually a potential to safely overclock what sort of issues will you run into that's what we're going to be checking out today So those who were expecting X570 to be a light refresh of X470, you'd be totally wrong. As X570 motherboards emerged, we're honestly seeing motherboards that resemble Threadripper boards at first glance. Of course, that's not what they are, but seriously, these things are absolute tanks. I mean, just look at them. I think it's very easy to overspend on features that most of you do not need. By saving money on your motherboard choice, perhaps going with a cheaper B350 or B450 motherboard instead, you could put that extra cash towards upgrading your CPU or GPU. The main concerns that this raises though is potentially overheating the motherboard's VRM and also not reaching as high of an overclock as you probably could have on something more expensive. So the B350 motherboard that we're testing today is the ASUS B350F Strix. It is one of the more expensive B350 motherboards out there, but it does have a fairly mediocre VRM. Here we're seeing a 4 plus 2 phase VRM where the V-Core VRM phases are made up of one high side and two low side MOSFETs. Overall, this is really average and fairly typical of what you'll find on most B350 motherboards. These specific MOSFETs are from On Semiconductor, the high sides are 4C09Bs and the low sides are 4C06Bs, again fairly mediocre. As a comparison, the majority of X570 motherboards that I've seen have moved to at least a 6 phase VRM for the CPU while using smart integrated power stages rated for at least 60 amps or more. The heatsink on this board also really lacks any substantial surface area to dissipate that heat from the MOSFETs underneath. Ideally, these heat sinks would resemble what we see now on the majority of Gigabyte's boards with an actual thin array connected to a heat pipe. Now, just testing this B350 board in isolation wouldn't really be too helpful. And for that, I've also ran the same settings on a few different X570 boards. On the mid-range end of things, we have the X570 Aorus Pro Wi-Fi. This board comes in at around 270 US dollars from what I can see online runs a 12 plus 2 phase VRM with integrated power stages and an actual heatsink to dissipate that heat. I've also tested two top of the line X570 motherboards to give us sort of the best case scenario. The first of them is the X570 Creation from MSI. This board retails for about $500 US and the V-Core VRM that you're getting here is a 14 phase. That's the result of a doubled seven phase. And the king of the stack, arguably the best X570 motherboard that money can buy is the X570 Aorus Extreme. This absolute tank of a motherboard uses a true 14 plus 2 phase VRM with 70 amp integrated power stages, a monstrous heat sink and a heat pipe connecting down to the chipset. I'll be using this board in an upcoming water cooled build so definitely stay tuned for that. Alright so starting off with the motherboards all running the 3900X at stock, these are the VRM thermals after 20 minutes rendering a scene in Blender. The B350 motherboard runs the warmest as expected, but it's not exactly melting. I've stretched the X axis to max out at 120 degrees C here for a reason. It's to give us some perspective on what a conservative upper limit is for a typical VRM MOSFET. I've also listed the voltage that the CPU was running at for each board. Remember that this is with the default settings and the B350 board did seem to run the 3900X the warmest and at the highest voltage. The X570 motherboards are a lot more conservative in that regard. So what happens when we overclock the 3900X to 4.2 GHz at 1.40 volts? Well, the B350 motherboard is still running okay, topping out at 85.2 degrees C after 20 minutes. This was also on an open test bench with no direct airflow. The X570 Creation and Aorus Pro Wi-Fi are running nice and cool at just 60 degrees C, and the Aorus Extreme is barely breaking a sweat, 46 degrees C there. Now a point I want to make clear here is that this represents the near worst case. Each board was tested on an open test bench without direct airflow. I even relocated the AIO to the bottom of the test bench towards the GPU. Now if we mount the AIO where I usually do for this test bench, which is right behind the motherboard, that basically eliminates the risk of overheating the V-Core VRM on the B3 50 board altogether, where we drop around 23 degrees C. So if you put this motherboard in a case with the 3900X and you have a top mount 
mounted radiator or even say a top mounted and remounted fan, you really have nothing to worry about when it comes to VRM thermals. When looking at overclocking potential on a mediocre VRM like this, I was still able to hit the 4.4 GHz that the CPU was stable on on the X570 motherboards, but it did require slightly higher voltage. This means we're getting the same performance, but higher power draw and thermals both for the CPU and VRM. This is only relevant if you're doing a manual overclock though. Memory overclocking on the B350 motherboard is also something that was not just as simple as enabling XMP like it is on the X570 motherboards. All I had to do here here though was loosen the timings from CL14 to CL15 on the 32GB 3200MHz kit that I was running and after that it was rock solid. So when the majority of X570 motherboards released with 10 plus phase VRMs, super thick PCBs and just a $300 plus price tag, it kind of gives you the impression that okay this is what's required to run the 3900X, the top of the line. Ryzen CPUs should be getting these sort of motherboards. But after looking at the testing today, that is just not the case. And in fact, you can run the 3900X more than safely on a typical B450 motherboard. Just check out the VRMs before you buy it. And I would say the majority of B350 motherboards, before we got that nice VRM upgrade up to B450, most B350 motherboards can support this CPU quite fine. And if your case has some decent airflow as well, you'll be able to overclock without an issue. Honestly, I am pretty surprised with the testing. Going into this video, I really thought that, okay, at stock, it's going to be fine. But when we overclock and push the vCore above 1.4 volts, I was almost certain that I would trigger the over temperature protection on the VRMs. So honestly, I think a solid B450 or X470 motherboard is the way to go even for the 3900X, especially if it allows you to allocate more spending on something like your GPU or for your CPU cooling. For X570 motherboards, you can expect to pay a premium for features that most of you probably won't get anything out of anyway. Things like a thicker PCB, active chipset cooling, PCI Express 4.0, and an unnecessarily beefy VRM with 10 or more phases. So I guess that pretty much settles the debate then on whether the 3900X will run on these cheap B350 boards. And if you do have the Ryzen 3900X, I'd be more than interested to see what sort of motherboards people are buying for this CPU. Uh, are you willing to take the risk with something a bit cheaper? Or have you shelled out the extra cash and gotten yourself an X570 motherboard? Let me know down below. As always guys, a huge thanks for watching. Consider subscribing down below if you haven't already. And I'll see you all in the next one.